We welcome all to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, the Mother Church of the Diocese of Syracuse. We welcome especially our many visitors and friends today who have come with us, joining with us as we remember the tragic events that took place 10 years ago in New York City, in Washington, and in Pennsylvania. As we remember and reflect upon that day, even today, we cannot help but feel some resentment. And feeling that resentment, we recognize that Jesus has a message for us in the gospel. It's a message of forgiveness, powerfully expressed in the parable of the king and his dealings with his servant. The debt was great, the king's mercy even greater. And one of the graces the Lord gives us is the ability to forgive someone. It comes slowly, and sometimes it needs to be requested. Today, even as our sense of security as individuals and really as society is challenged, let's ask the Lord for the gift and the grace of forgiveness. The point of the parable is not that Jesus is fickable, fickle about forgiveness, taking it back if we do not do likewise, nor that God is vindictive if we fail to follow the divine lead. Rather, the parable is a stark warning of the consequences of letting our hearts become solidified in unforgiveness. Hearts hardened, desiring revenge, set in motion endless cycles of violence. When we pray for the gift of forgiveness, we ourselves experience God's tender mercy. September 11, 2001 was a terrible day for all of us. So many people wondered where God was and how he could permit this tragedy. But our faith teaches us that God was present and he walked with us each step of the way as the events of that day unfolded. On that day, however, a sad day, something else happened, something good. We opened our hearts and loved one another openly and freely that day. Family and friends gathered to reassure one another. People who don't often go to church found their way there and knelt in prayer. People were extraordinarily kind to one another, even to strangers. All over the country, people were bewildered, talked in hushed tones, and wondered about the future. People from other countries around the world sent expressions of concern and sympathy. Some nation, nations sent rescue workers to work side by side with our own people with our dedicated firefighters and police officers who responded to that destruction. On that dark day, people turned to one another and showed love, helping out strangers and anyone in need. How often have we been told that love is the heart of the Christian message? It's the main thing that Jesus talked about when he walked on earth. He tells us, love your neighbor as yourself. But he also tells us to love our enemies and those who persecute us. The scripture readings for today are so appropriate. The book of Sirach was written to the Jewish people long before Christ 
to remind them that they were needed and that they needed to do everything they could to preserve their Jewish identity. And the way they would preserve their identity was if they would forgive their neighbor's injustice, set enmity aside, and hate no one. That message is also true for us today. In the gospel, Jesus reminds us to forgive our brothers and sisters. St. Peter asks Jesus, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how many times must I forgive him? Seven times? And Jesus says, no, no, not seven times, but 77 times. There is no number at which we can stop forgiving. We must forgive over and over and over again, just as Jesus forgives us over and over again. And this anniversary of 9-11, could God really be calling us to love our enemies? Indeed, he does. God loves each of us with our strengths and our weaknesses. He loves us even when we turn away from him. He asks us to love others who are not perfect or offend and even hurt us. We cannot do it on our own, but we can only do it if we stay connected to God. It is only when we are, we are receiving God's love on a daily basis through prayer and the sacraments that we have the power to put our love into action and transform enemies into friends. I imagine that each of us on this anniversary come with a variety of sentiments, depending perhaps on our age or what we recall from that day, whether we knew someone who perished or someone who responded to the destruction by offering their assistance. I don't think that one word will ever be able to capture that day. Resentment may resurface. Gratitude for the countless gifts of self-sacrifice and generosity offered by so many may also find a place in our hearts. And then, of course, there's the inner conflict we may experience when we hear the gospel speak so emphatically about love of enemies and forgiveness even for those who hurt us. Such a wide range of thoughts and feelings is to be expected. But in the selflessness offered by so many on September 11, 2001, and in the days and months that followed, do we not learn that as horrific as that day was, mercy and kindness, goodness and love were stronger than the death that doomed the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. That's the message that I hope is alive in our hearts today. And so let us turn to the patroness of our country, the patroness of our diocese, the patron of this cathedral church, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, and ask her intercession on behalf of all of those who died on that terrible day, but also for peace in our beloved country and in our diocese.